Rett syndrome is a devastating neurological disorder that almost exclusively affects girls and women. The disorder is characterized by breathing dysfunction, a loss of the use of the hands, and the inability to walk independently or to speak. Seizures are common. Mutations in the MECP2 gene and its corresponding MECP2 protein are the cause of Rett syndrome. Despite intense efforts spanning decades, the precise function of MECP2 has been difficult to pin down. Michael Greenberg's neuroscience lab at Harvard Medical School took on this challenge with financial support from the Rett Syndrome Research Trust. Professor Adrian Bird, who discovered MECP2 in the early 1990s, proposed that the protein is a repressor of downstream genes. Over the past 15 years, many labs have tried to identify the target genes which MECP2 represses. Their results have yielded long lists of genes whose expression changes when MECP2 is not present. However, very little overlap existed from lab to lab, making it difficult to come to a consensus as to how mutation of MECP2 leads to neuronal dysfunction. In research reported in the journal Nature, published today, Harrison Gable and Benyam Kinde set out to analyze the various gene expression datasets from multiple labs in search of a common theme. This led them to a surprising finding, the length of the gene. Genes are made of strings of nucleotides within our genome that spell out the code for each of the proteins in our cells that carry out biological functions. The production of proteins from genes is referred to as gene expression. Because some proteins need to be small and others are quite large, the size of the gene that encodes them can vary dramatically. There are thousands of genes in our genome that encode all of the proteins that our cells need. The median size gene is about 20,000 nucleotides long, but about 10% of genes are greater than 100,000 nucleotides, and some of them extend for more than 1 million nucleotides. Gable, Kinde, and Greenberg discovered that in the absence of MECP2 in the mouse brain, the expression of particularly longer genes, those greater than 100,000 nucleotides, goes up. This was the case across all the analyzed data sets from different laboratories and in studies of different brain regions. Furthermore, the longer the gene, the more it overexpressed its protein. While the increase in expression is modest, 3 to 10 percent, it applied to thousands of genes. The scientists then checked gene expression in the MECP2 duplication mouse model and found longer genes are underexpressed. So for longer genes, not having MECP2 leads to overexpression, while too much MECP2 leads to underexpression. Next, the scientists analyzed longer gene expression in mice of different ages. Though presymptomatic four-week-old mice showed some detectable overexpression, the effect was more dramatic in older nine-week-old mice that had started to show Rett-like symptoms. To see if longer gene overexpression might contribute to Rett syndrome, the scientists then compared two different mouse models with varying symptoms. They found that mice with more severe Rett-like symptoms displayed more overexpression. Therefore, the degree of increased expression in longer genes correlates with disease severity. Finally, they looked at gene expression in autopsy brains of individuals with Rett. Just as in the mice models, they found that longer genes were overexpressed. From all of this analysis, the scientists concluded that overexpression of longer genes is likely to be an important pathological event that occurs in the brain in Rett syndrome. Gable, Kinde, and Greenberg then focused on understanding how the altered expression of these genes might cause neurological dysfunction in the disorder. Interestingly, they uncovered evidence that while all cell types in the body use short and medium length genes, Neurons in our brain use the longer genes more than cells in other parts of our body. Neurons specifically need these longer genes to create connections with one another during brain development and to control the electrical activity of the brain. Furthermore, upon analysis of the 466 genes whose expression is most robustly overexpressed in the absence of MECP2 and underexpressed in the duplication syndrome, the scientists noticed that not only are these genes longer, but many have neuronal functions and have been implicated in other autism spectrum disorders. This fact could help explain why Rett is mostly a neurological disease. 
The experiment results converged to suggest that Rett syndrome results from a subtle yet widespread overexpression of longer genes with functions important for the brain. The duplication syndrome on the other end could be due to underexpression of these same genes. Last year, the labs of Mark Zilka and Ben Philpot at UNC Chapel Hill discovered that a class of drugs called topoisomerase inhibitors reduce the expression of longer genes. This begged the question of whether these drugs could help in RET by reversing the overexpression of genes and neurons where MECP2 is lost. The researchers found that indeed low doses of the drug topotecan reduced expression levels of longer genes when added in culture to cells that had no MECP2. This opens the door to the possibility that pharmacological interventions aimed at reducing the expression of longer genes may be beneficial in Rett syndrome. It is important to note that topoisomerase inhibitors are chemotherapeutic drugs used to treat cancer and therefore are likely to be too toxic to use for Rett syndrome. However, the proof of principle from this drug treatment provides the researchers with a new paradigm for drug discovery, giving us a new strategy in the hunt for Rett syndrome treatments. Additional studies will be required to determine if this class of drugs can be pursued for RET or whether other options exist. While there is much more work left to be done, the discoveries made by Dr. Greenberg's laboratory provide important new insight into how genes are regulated by MECP2 and how RET syndrome comes about when MECP2 is lost. These insights may open the door for the development of new therapeutic strategies for RET syndrome.